From where does courage come? From the stomach-churned battle cry for freedom, screamed in every language from the time humans first sought to enslave that most basic right, from the faces of the hungry and the war-torn, too ill themselves to fight, and who must look to the strong for salvation, from the intellectual who ponders the morals of society and chooses to speak out, fully aware of the consequences, from the millions who have gone before and done the unspeakable and lived the unthinkable and are today bleeding that same red courage from skin of all colors? Or does courage come from a quiet place, deep inside, that rises in the night when all is blackest and lifts the heaviest of burdens, that others shall never be forced into the horror of battle and the terror of killing? Yet how does that courage continue long after the battle cries are silenced, long after the coffins are loaded, long after a victory or a defeat is declared by this or that government, when the once strong soldier is shaky and the battle cry still rings in that soldier's head until all that awaits is a parade and a bed at a run-down VA hospital or a cardboard box on the street? Let us honor courage not with parades and brass bands, but with substance, that those who have shown such courage for our sakes should now reap the benefits of the very best this country can bestow.